A local news crew gets a shocking scoop while covering the near-fatal stabbing of a 61-year-old woman. They were at the scene when out of nowhere the victim's daughter approached them and incredibly confessed to the crime, all with the camera rolling. Here's a story from WVLT's Hillary Magic. Right side those green chairs and she lives upstairs. The person talking lives at Sunchase Apartments and is close friends with the 61-year-old woman who was stabbed a few doors down early Tuesday morning. She doesn't want her face shown, but tells me the woman's daughter, Katie Nichols, is to blame. She's just not emotionally stable and, you know, does the best that she can, but needs quite a bit of help. She says after the stabbing, Nichols took off with her young daughter. And I almost kind of hope that she does come back through here so that we can get the authorities to to get her. Not five minutes later, it happened. Nichols walked up to the camera. The satanic cult in this city has been casting satanic spells on me for four or three, four days. I'm exhausted. I came home. I found out that my mom was the ringleader and she was cr trying to kill my daughter. Nichols tells me she had to act because her mom was putting curses on them. I had to kill her. She was going to kill both of us. She was so powerful. I had no idea. I had no idea that my mother was that powerful. Deputies say Nichols' mother was stabbed in the neck, chest, and stomach and was rushed to the hospital for surgery. When I left, she was still breathing. Well, that's good. I stabbed her three times and she should have died. She was still breathing. And I don't know what happened to her afterwards. And I don't know where they took her or what exactly happened, but she was the Antichrist. She did not die. Nichols says afterwards, she and her daughter hid out. We went in my car and we ended up in a little rural area and we just waited for the sign to, that it was safe to come back. Now that Nichols is in custody, neighbors say they're hopeful she'll get the help she needs. But Nichols is convinced she did everyone a favor. She had a sim symbolic representations of my death, my daughter's death, every nuclear explosion that was supposed to happen that's not going to now because all of the satanic cult has been rounded up and killed now. That was Hillary McGack from our affiliate WVLT reporting. Lori, the news said you were stabbed in the chest, the stomach, yes. and the throat. Yes. Tell us, tell us a little well, more about Well, I was actually stabbed in the heart, in the lung, left lung, and my throat was slit. Um, and this was after she had choked me unconscious, so I don't remember any of this. I didn't feel it. Um, when I came to, I didn't feel any pain. I just thought that, she, that I had woke up because she had choked me. Right. So, and it was totally dark, um, but I was having trouble breathing. So I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know um, what. Um, so that's when I started crawling out of the apartment and they, the EMTs looked at me and said, where's all this blood coming from? And that's when I knew something horrible had happened to me. Wow. So um, it's a miracle that I even woke up and was conscious. That's, that's what, and, and I know that was God because I didn't hear any noise and I shouldn't have woken up. I should have just died right there, right. you know, and, and they, it was really touch and go. I was in UT for two months um, and I developed sepsis. I went to the ICU, trauma ICU twice. I was intubated twice. Um, the trauma surgeon at one point on her notes said high risk of death. Wow. And she, they didn't know what else to do. Um, they did not expect me to live. Wow. Not at all. So, I mean, it, it, those were very, very serious injuries. <laughs> it doesn't get worse than that. Yeah. Tell us a little, just, uh, just a brief synopsis of, of Katie as a young child and growing up. What, what did you notice in her that might have led to, to, to see this? Well, we, uh, we came from a very normal family. My husband and I were both professionals. Um, uh, she was kind of quiet growing up, but we, uh, that was about it. Um, she was a very, very bright student. And in high school, she uh, dropped out of high school. She didn't want to go anymore. I don't know why. She got, I think she got a little depressed. We had just moved here to, to uh, uh, Knoxville, so and new, I think that school. was really, yeah, that was really hard. But she did get her GED, and um, but just kind of, you know, went around from shop to shop and couldn't really keep a job, and but really didn't notice anything. She had moved to Ohio and then came back when she was 30 and to here to Knoxville, and that's when I started seeing symptoms that she might be mentally ill. Okay. Um, 
Uh, we, she was really at a crisis point. She was it backed into the wall and was very, under a very stressful situation. She was living with me in a one-bedroom apartment with my granddaughter, um, who was eight at the time. So um, I was trying to uh, help her in some way, but it's very difficult for an adult to make an adult do <laughs> what they're supposed to do and get therapy. Okay, and so now, now tell us about that night. And she came in very calmly, very, um, we had not argued the night before, she had not taken drugs, uh, there was no indication that there was anything wrong. Um, and so she came in and just started in on me. Um, she didn't say anything, she didn't scream and yell at me, it was uh, very calmly. Mm -hmm. um, but she, uh, I don't know why I kept saying, Katie, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I'm pinned under the covers and she's trying to choke me on the bed. and. So finally we get to the floor and she chokes me unconscious. Okay. So, and, and, and so she was, bless her heart, her delusion, she just, she thought I really was the devil. Yeah. And, and she was really trying to protect herself and her child, as you saw in the video. And then, so then after this, the, the district attorney um, wants to prosecute. Yes, and, and then, then I, when I get well, well enough, I go into the prosecutor's office and he said, well, we're gonna go to trial, you know, for attempted murder, and I said, no, wait, no. And they said, well, they've done psychological tests and she's not committable to a mental institution. I said, did you see the film? Did you see? <laughs> she, she obviously is. She's obviously very paranoid and delusional. And um, they said, well, she passed their basic tests and so she can stand trial. And at that point, I, you know, I don't know much about the court system, but then I really started fighting for my daughter. Okay. Um, because, uh, I, I know why I survived is because I want I fought for her. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank heavens she I was her only advocate. Right, because had really. you had you have died, yeah. it would have been yeah. just it an, would, an she would have gone to trial and she would uh, the prosecutor said twenty years in jail. Wow. Now she had never done anything like this. She'd never been violent. She'd never been you know this was very unusual. I w I never had a fear for my life uh, or my granddaughters. Obviously, they were in the same apartment with me. Um, this she just had a psychotic break and that was. Um, so we, it was a long struggle. Um, while Katie was in the jail here, um, we went back and forth. Finally, the prosecutor and the defense attorney actually got together. It's a very rare instance when they do that, but I was so insistent that she was mentally ill and not a criminal, and that she needed treatment and not jail mm -hmm. and trial. Um, and so they finally, um, because I was a mother and the victim and a psychiatric nurse, they listened to me. To me, it's an amazing story of a mom who, who realizes yeah. their daughter has yeah. a problem, tries to get help, doesn't, yeah. and can't get anybody's so attention, common. That's so common and then there. ends up getting attacked yeah. by the daughter she's trying to get help for. Mm -hmm. And then even afterwards, is the advocate going, no, don't. Don't prosecute my daughter. My right. daughter needs help. I've been saying that yes. even before. Yes. And yes. I'm the one saying it now. Yeah. So yes. wow. Just so, a, a yeah. amazing love that and I and I know just from our conversation many times before, your your true dream is that your daughter is with you in heaven. Yes. Yes. And, and yeah. so ultimately you you want to see the redemptive story <laughs> that she would not only overcome a, a a psychological issue yeah. but actually come to know Christ as her Lord and Savior yes. and be forgiven with the same forgiveness that we all oh absolutely need. yeah so through all of this mm -hmm. all, all that you've been through mm -hmm. what have you learned about the redemptive love of God in the midst of all this I, I know that God is always there and he's going to help me more than I could ever do myself. Mm -hmm. And he, he's going to, you know, by my forgiving her, I, I feel I love her and you, you can't, you've got to forgive people. Um, it's really hard because <laughs> I had some, some, you know, I was mad at her and, I, you know, one minute I was mad at her because I went through a lot of suffering. Sure. But it, in the end, it, it, God just worked out everything. Yeah. And, and so, so you really, really are a mom who not only had a broken heart, but... but I have a, a physically scarred, broken heart. Yeah. I can't just say I have a broken heart. There is a scar there. Wow, that yeah. is amazing. And that reminds me of Jesus' love because nobody else could have got me through that except Him. Yeah, wow. So I'm proud of that scar.